Hey guys, Kev here, and I have an interesting one for you today. So many, many of you have compared these two knives here on YouTube and Instagram. Got my uh, Polar Orange Vanilla Seltzer. So if you are new to this conversation, this here is the Knife Standards RR Station. This is a OEM'd by Best Tech Project from Knife Standards. And this knife was launched, I don't know, maybe a year ago at this point originally. And then just about a month ago, Best Tech themselves launched this knife. This is the Best Tech TARDIS. It has Ostop Hell's name on it. So they're saying this is his design. And a lot of you and myself were pretty curious to compare these because, well, they look really, really similar. Especially if you're looking at them on Instagram or in pictures. They really, really look similar. And the question is out there whether Best Tech took some liberties here because they OEM this design for somebody and they maybe push that into this design to get it out in a budget form. And, you know, that all makes sense to me, you know, that they would take a knife that they made for somebody and say, hey, we like a lot of aspects of that, right? So why don't we make something similar uh, but different, you know, we're making it super affordable. It's not the same size or any of those things. And, you know, put it out there, right? We've already made the knife. We know it's a viable sort of setup. Um, so I get that, right? Um, but it sort of adds a wrinkle to it when you see that Ostop's name is on here. So what that tells me is that Ostop Hell designed this himself and passed it to Best Tech. So essentially, he independently designed it from the Knife Standards knife and sent it to Best Tech for them to make as a licensed product, right? And so Best Tech didn't do any of what I just said. They just got a design from a designer, and they made it, and it just happens to have a lot of similarities to this knife that they OEM'd previously, right? Interesting, really. Um, now, that is sort of a breakdown of, you know, the situation, so to speak. I'm not sitting here claiming they copied him or any of that stuff. So don't take that. I just wanted to lay out the conversation that has been had, right, online or whatever, and in my head, maybe. Um and then I wanted to actually compare these and, and look at them and say, are they really that similar? Because after handling both of these now, um, I really don't think they're that similar. I think there are similarities. I do think I can, I can see why anybody would look at them and knowing that Best Tech OEM this go, oh, that's, you know, uh, they took some liberty there, you know. But... I don't necessarily agree with it, I think, after handling them both. Um, so let's just talk about it, I guess, right? Um, I've done a video on this knife before. The, the RR Station is obviously a much more premium knife. It is a fantastic knife. Uh, extremely well designed by ATR over at Knife Standards. Um, this is in Vanex Super Clean, which is very cool. It's got this beautiful belt satin hollow ground just oh man it's really nice it's just a little big for my taste um so i would love to see a mini at some point i would probably pick up a mini uh, but you can see you know it's a larger size knife um you know we have let's see what we have we have almost four inches on the blade length and then we have four and three quarter on the handle so you're looking at almost a nine inch knife here okay so that's pretty big in my opinion that's what she said um 
Bass Tech did an absolutely fantastic job on the production of this knife. The transitions are almost impossible to feel. Um, they are Riot level transitions. Um, the inlays are extremely well machined. The bead blasting is done. This pivot is gorgeous. Again, talking about that belt satin, look at the action on this. Um, this is actually a tank. There is no play in any direction, and look at that. You have thumb studs for a beautiful thumb flick. Reverse flick right there, no problem. And you can even take this front flipper, and it, I mean, it's, it's easy, you know. I think these are available. If you go over to uh, knifestandards.com or check out his website, I'll link it down below. Um, you can probably pick this up right now, which is pretty sweet. Um, this was loaned in to the channel by my boy Brent over at Backpack B. He did want me to note that this is for sale. So um, I guess maybe the size is a little much for him as well. I'm not sure why. He also just has a million knives, and you can't keep them all, right? Um, so he wanted me to let you guys know that this is for sale. So if somebody out there wants this knife in particular, number 18 in the Arctic, and I'm sure he's going to have a good price on it, um, considering it's secondary, um, then hit up Brent. So I just want to put that out there. Now, the weight on this thing is astonishing. You know, I don't have it next to me here. But this can't be more than four ounces, and I'd be surprised if it wasn't in the threes. And that's for an almost four-inch blade. It is extremely well done. The milling in here is great. So you have the inlays, and then you even have more milling than that in there. So it really uh, keeps the weight down on this. Then you have the hollow grind. You have a thin sort of short blade. All of that really equates to a nice lightweight knife. Um yeah, the, I mean, this came out so well done. I'm really impressed. The one thing I didn't love myself when I had the prototype is the standoffs. I'd have loved to have seen a backspacer. It just seems a little off to me that it has two here and doesn't have anything down here. Um, I don't know why that's weird to me. Like, if you look at this knife, they added two, but there's one here and one here, and they're kind of down low, where this is like wide open down there i don't know it's just odd to me for some reason it catches my eye i don't know um but anyway you can see the detail on this with the pivot and the milling and everything um that hollow grind all that goodness dead centered i mean it's just a beautiful knife so then we can talk about the tardis here um this one is a budget offering from best tech this one is in um what the hell is this steel on this thing? D2 or uh, 154 or D2. It's in D2 steel. So I'd venture to guess it's like a $60 knife, something like that. I'll link it down below if I can. Um, but this one to me is much more cleavery. You know, it, it's got a very heavy blade. So in opposite fashion to the station, this is very heavy to me. This has got to be like a five ounce knife. And it's much smaller, right? Um, you have on this one, you have a, um, two-tone blade. Now this one comes in a two-tone version. It's a two-tone with a belt satin and then a light tumble over it. We actually are doing the same thing on our stout model. Um, but Best Tech has done the two-tone for a long time, I think. So I don't think that's sort of, you know, any kind of indication of anything. But this does come in that, and it would be better to compare those, but I don't, you know, can't have everything, right? Um, but you'll see the way the, the, well, let's just keep talking about this one, and then I'll go through comparisons. Um, this one, you also have sort of the jimping that rides up, and you can front flip that. It's not quite as easy. The detent, I feel like, is a little bit stronger, and it's, not quite as high above the pivot, I feel like, as this one is. So this one, I can kind of get up there, and you can see I can get pressure on it and pop it. Where this one, it's kind of like, you know, um, if you've seen any of my videos on our Debo Growler V2, you can front flip it. But it's not really like a front flipper, you know what I mean? It's just possible for some people. Um, they both have thumb studs, obviously. This one has this cutout here, sort of square cutout, and then a just straight lock bar with a little bit of jimping on it. 
right? And then you have this little bit of a flat right here before you get to the blade. So it's kind of hard to choke up. You can kind of do this, but you're mostly meant to choke back here, right? Jimping runs up the spine about halfway to this sort of poon. Has an added sort of poon on it. Hard to tell, but you can see that little bit of a poon right there, right? Um, you have a milled line down the uh, scale here. Another little cutout right here, which is pretty cool. And then, like I said, there's two standouts back there and a very budgety loop over clip that I like. I actually like this super thin uh, loop over clip. Just looks cool to me. Um, so ergos wise, it's actually quite comfortable. But when you get to the blade and the action, it's it's a cleaver, right? Like it's super heavy cleavery blade um like the blade weighs more than the handle i think on this knife so that's interesting and then you have a flat grind a little taller blade flat grind on it right so that is the um tardis right so now let's put these two together again and let's talk about it so the more that I put them together, the more that I kind of discuss this, the less similarities I see in the knives. Now, there's no doubt that if somebody saw the outline of both of these knives, they would say those are similar, right? Those are from the same family almost, right? Like a large and a small. I totally see that. But I also believe that this is a world where they two things can be separate, you know? but yet be very similar. Um, if you look at the studs on this, you can see the stud starts here and then the fuller starts right behind it, right? You see that? You kind of see there's like a little shape cut out of the fuller and then the stud sits in there. On this one, the fuller starts way back here and it kind of matches up with this groove that's milled along the whole scale. So it follows that milling pattern and then that blood groove goes all the way and the stud is kind of just dropped in there so that's a big difference you can see here you can also see the stud sits further back on this one than on this one um you can see when the blades are closed the handle shape is very different now obviously they're both still rectangular sort of shaped handles but this one has more sort of angles to it in places where this one's more squared, right? Has this little bit of a rounding down here, which is very different. This one has this sort of U cutout for the lock bar access. This one has a lower down sort of cutout, right? Square cutout. Uh, the other big difference I notice is this flat right here, right? So this is way more comfortable to me to hold in the hand because I'm choking up. I can get up behind that blade and really utilize it, right? Where this one, I have that tiny little flat and then I'm getting right into the blade. This has a nice sharpening choil built in. This one does not, right? Both are pretty much straight warnies, whatever you want to call them, cleavers. Um, but again, the station here has this angle down. It kind of makes it a sheep's foot. Where this, to me, I would call a cleaver. This, I would call a sheep's foot. You can go either way on that, but the point is you can see that difference. That's a huge difference in design right there. This comes down to that stub tip cleaver style where this is going to have a nice tip that you're still going to be able to use to easily penetrate stuff opening packages getting into tape you can do that with this but this is going to be much better at it that hollow grind is going to come down to a nice thin edge um so the cutting experience in my opinion is much better on the station obviously you get more blade and everything but that hollow grind just and the way that tip comes down makes more sense to me um Obviously, you can see a million other design differences in the knives. But those are the big ones for me that really made me think, eh, I don't know. Um, you can see how much taller this one is, blade-wise, right? Like, line them up. You can see that the TARDIS blade sticks up an eighth of an inch or whatever above the station. So this one is a long, slendery 
sort of blade where this one is a short cleavery sort of design um action wise you know this one's just on point the detent is money it is strong enough that i get great resistance i don't feel in any way that it is soft i'm not getting that vibe at all yet i can front flip it with ease no problem at all it's an absolute pleasure to fidget with left-handed right-handed whatever you want to do right you can see it it drops no problem but watch it drop smooth control it's not just it is a guillotine but it's not a stupid chop your finger off guillotine it's a nice controlled drop in my opinion right this one on the other hand is a cut your finger off once it passes that detent you're fucked kind of knife right um this detent is a little too strong on this one it has torn the shit out of my fingers flicking it these studs are too sharp in my opinion these studs are absolutely perfect just absolute money this just has that pyramid stepping and it just is a little that with combination to the detent like you'll hear it and usually a clicky detent i like this still has a great detent it just doesn't stick right in this aspect it just is a little much for me now they had to do that because this blade is so damn heavy right um and then yeah it has that just drop cleavery feel to it and it's just different in that aspect, you know? You can see the blade to handle ratio on this. See how much handle is left after that blade. Check the blade to handle ratio out on this one. Just a sliver there. You have just a little bit left over. Again, this one has a freaking massive amount of blade, or sorry, handle left over. I mean, you're talking about that much handle left over. On this one, you're talking about I can't even squeeze my finger in there to show you, right? And that's part of having the standoffs the way they are. You can, I guess, bring that blade down a little further instead of having them like this, which does look more normal, but this is better in terms of that, right? Um, this one has a reversible clip, so your more expensive knife has a reversible clip, which is interesting. Um, anyway, I wasn't here to compare them in that sense, really. Um, I just thought it was an interesting conversation I've had with some people. Um, you know, like, hey, it looks like they just straight up knocked off our, our station. That's what it felt like when I, when I first saw it. Those were the conversations I had in chats with groups. And just the more I looked at them the less I felt that way. It's always funny how our brains do that, right? Um, how many times have you seen a knife and you go, oh my God, that looks just like this. And it's just how our brains work. But I luckily have the pleasure um, and you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to handle so many knives. So I get to handle those knives that people compare to each other and whatnot. And you know what? Nine out of ten times, I get them both in hand, and I end up feeling like they're different enough. There's no way I could sit here and say one person ripped the other one. I just can't. Like, it's just not a close enough call for that. And uh, I think actually handling and feeling the knives is the way to, to really feel that. Um, and I know not everybody can do that, but, you know, we need to be careful with, with stuff we talk about um without actually having hands-on experience you know um so anyway similar knives from the same oem but also very different i would love to hear o stop hell's uh story on this design that's what i feel like would be a really cool story to hear where he came up with this design what he was leaning into and all of that we know the story behind the station uh, knife standards atr great dude by the way uh, please go check out his channel check out his website um his father was very important to him he, lo he lost his father um a few years ago 
and uh, he kind of started the Knife Standards brand because of that and to honor his father. The first model was the RR Standard, and the second one here was the RR Station. His, his father really loved trains, and I, I don't know if he was into modeling trains or whatever, but he designed this to kind of look like a sleek motor uh, locomotive, locomotive, and that really comes through in the design. I find that to be a really nice story, a cool story. I love to know what a knife was designed after and everything. So I would love to hear the story on this one, just to, you know, hear what, you know, where he came from. They both ended up in a similar, you know, uh, platform here. But maybe they got there from completely different angles. That, that would be the cool thing to hear. Um, so anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think they're similar? What knives do you think are super similar? Is there anything else you guys want me to get in hand and compare so I can give you a good rundown on, on if I really think it's similar or not? You can see here, right? You can make your own determination on that. Um, I want to thank Best Tech. They sent me this knife to check out. I really appreciate that. It's a cool knife. If you're into these cleavery blades, I think it's a really cool offering. Um, and I know they're trying to keep it affordable with the G10 and D2. And shout out to Brent for loaning me the station for this video. I mean, I literally asked to borrow it for this video and he was cool with it, which is awesome. Um, and again, he is going to be selling this. So if anybody's interested, let him know, let me know. Uh, and shout out to ATR over at Knife Standards um for just making cool designs and being a good dude and and all of that i'm not trying to drag anybody or any company into anything here i literally just wanted to have a conversation i think i was pretty unbiased about it and upfront about it and just being honest and talking about it and i think that's important so anyway uh let me know down in the comments i love you guys links down below for everything and i hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you guys later.